What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of The Realistic CM, this is episode number 6. And we start today's episode off with Crystal Palace away at Selhurst Park on the back of our massive 4-0 victory against the Baggies in the last game in the last episode. This one was our final game of 2020 and right now as we sit in mid-table we are basically exactly where I expected us to be. We're not pushing for a Europa League place but we're not struggling and in a relegation scrap either. So in the second half of the season it's going to be interesting. Will we kick on and go for a top 10 place? Will we fall down a little bit and possibly be dragged in to a relegation battle or will we remain? in mid-table. To be honest, I wouldn't mind that for our first season. Still, yeah, for the first game, Crystal Palace away. Uh, Dimitri Payet back in the Premier League, back in London, but now playing for Hodgson side, made it 1-0. I've mentioned before, like, Payet, when he played for West Ham, you know, I had to admit it, you know, I had to be honest about it. I just, I really enjoyed watching him play, you know. He was just such, such a great feel for the game. He had such flair, the touch for the unexpected. He scored some absolutely amazing goals uh, for West Ham. It was a bit of a sour way how his career kind of came to an end there uh, for the London side. But no, he was a great player to watch. He, he really was one of those sort of players who just gets bums off seats. You know, I talked about it before. He used to he used to play with emotion. He used to use emotion from the crowd. Uh, that's why he did so well at Upton Park, I feel. And um, yeah, fabulous player to watch. Scored the opening goal of the game. Palestine went 2-0 up. And also did grab a consolation goal through Chris Wood of half an hour to go. That's all it proved to be. His 10th of the season, only enough to get us a reduced goal deficit defeat. So, see the lead we're seven, uh, 17 games to go. Man City still on top by 7 points. Wolves still in second. We are 11th right now with 26 points on the board. But, as you can see, 10 points off Southampton in 18th place. Yeah, I mean, there is a long way to go. 17 games still remaining, but I feel pretty confident we'll be okay. I look at some of the teams that are below us in the table right now, and I feel very confident our team is better than theirs, so I feel pretty confident. We'll be able to avoid uh, a relegation scrap, but when we can get ourselves into the top 10 come the end of the first season, I would definitely take that for our first year at Turf Moor, and it will be quite difficult to do. Anyway, brief look at the academy and the scouting update as we've now into January 2021. There are a couple of players in there that look pretty decent. Maybe a couple of position changes might see some improvements in their overall rating. But for the most part, four players so far, but as I mentioned before, they all have decent potential ranges. And this is why you want to be selective when giving youth players academy scholarships. It's just far better for you in the long run as opposed to having a load of players, many of which might not hit their potential might not even have even decent potential and will probably end up just being a waste of time and uh, if you give them a pro deal a waste of well a minor wage and a squad slot in your team as well um, a real brief, a brief look at the squad as well the statistics for the first season you can see really who have been our three best players this year Chris Wood Reese Nelson and I would say Nick Pope as well and Jay Rodriguez to be fair has been pretty decent as well as a second choice option up top alongside Chris Wood and we have a lot of players that are deals that come at the end of the year I think four of which can leave on free transfer so I gave three contract extensions one to Jack Cork one to Robbie Brady and also one to Jay Rodriguez as well now what you'll notice here in the Rodriguez contract it was the same with Cork and Brady as well um, I offered them salaries which are around the current wage they're on right now not a major decrease and only a minor extension I also gave Jay Rodriguez a release clause as well because I thought that would be quite realistic as well um, yeah in FIFA career mode for those that don't play it very often I haven't played it for a while Wages and salaries can be at times a little bit easy to negotiate and at times you can get players on really, really cheap salaries. I don't really want to exploit the, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a salary bug, but I don't really want to exploit the fact that you can get players on far cheaper wages than either what they're on right now or what they're expected to be earning. Jay Rodriguez, Jack Cork, and, uh, and uh, who else do we want to? Robbie Brady. All three of those might be willing to take a pay cut. Rodriguez took a five grand a week pay cut, but ultimately if I wanted to, I could get those guys for like 20 grand a week, a massive pay cut, like half what they're earning right now. It wouldn't be realistic. So, you know, we're trying to keep it as realistic as possible. That goes for transfers, signing sales, but also contracts as well. Um, still for the second game of today's episode, Canaries away from home, who, by the way, obviously winning promotion back to the Premier League. I'm really interested to see how they will do next season. Obviously, I talked about this before. I feel like Norwich came up a season too early, if you know what I mean. A couple of years ago, going to the Premier League under Daniel Farker, I really feel as though they were up a season too early. They had such fantastic young talent in their team and some, some really, really decent players, but they just weren't ready at the time. So I think going down to the championship wasn't really necessarily a bad thing because they've bounced back right back up with the championship, winning the league, and it'll be interesting to see if they've learned their lessons coming up for this year and if they've grown and matured as a side 
and will be better suited to playing Premier League football this time around. Very interesting to see what happens. And also, by the way, I talked about the uh, the high performance podcast being my favourite podcast that I listen to right now. Um, there is an episode with oh, what is his job role? It's something like sporting director. I don't think it is director of football, but uh, Stuart Webber, who basically oversees things at Norwich. Um, it is a really, really fascinating episode and, and definitely worth listening to. He does use some strong language. He doesn't, uh, you know, pull any punches. It's it's a really interesting episode and. Um, yeah, he talks about his time uh, as a young man wanting to be involved in football and the career he's had going from, I think it was Wrexham to Liverpool, I think one or two other places. Then he went to Huddersfield and then he left Huddersfield when they got promoted to go and join Norwich in the Championship. He talks a lot about his sort of uh, career, and even though he's still so young at 37, and what he's seen, or what he's done, what he's overseen, uh, the high expectations he has of the clubs he works with and himself as a person as well. Fascinating episode, well worth listening to. I'll leave a link in the description if I can find it but we won the game by three goals to one there Rodriguez marked his contract extension with a hat trick in this one I believe our first hat trick of the save so far so obviously that was really really cool I had to come from behind to win that one I conceded another penalty as well I don't know whether it's just me but any sort of contact in the box whatsoever in this year's FIFA seems to always see a penalty get awarded sometimes I think they're a little bit light okay most often they are justifiable I think that one was quite harsh but in the end it didn't matter managed to redeem ourselves there with a free one victory courtesy of Rodriguez bag in the match ball. Also a couple of bids here, one for Tarkowski and one for Ashley Barnes as well and another bid here for Chris Wood, our top scorer as well. Now real, real briefly on this, also we do have some players in really good form right now. Wood is in the best form right now. I'm not against selling him to a high profile club to keep it realistic. I was considering this bid here from Lazio though I thought the swap deal was quite unrealistic with them offering uh, Redu. Um, but I'm not against again selling a star player if they're in really really good form. If it's to a bigger club or a club that's in, you know, a, a, well, obviously we're in the top tier right now. If we were managing a lower league and then a higher tier or a club that's in a European competition, I wouldn't be against doing that again for the realism. It would be frustrating to lose someone like Wood. But for example, like Nick Pope, for example, like he's our star goalkeeper. He's really highly rated at OT England International. If we had a bid from, again, one of the big boys in the Premier League, for example, say, I don't know, Arsenal or uh, Chelsea or uh, Liverpool or whatever, put in a bid for Nick Pope, I, I probably would accept it just for the realism. So, again keep that in mind whilst we might have some star players in this team or players that are emerging into star players and being in great form if we get bids from bigger clubs for realism's sake it would be better to sell them uh, as opposed to keep them here even though I prefer to do that again it's all about trying to keep it realistic and I think at the moment as well we're doing a really decent job of it uh, too so keep your eyes on that as the January transfer window is of course now open so for the following game third of four today uh, leads away at Ellen Road you know you're not going to keep a clean sheet against Bielsa's boys and we did fall behind very early but this dude right here man seriously again for realism's sake, I could have signed him permanently, but uh, sorry, um, for, 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 for ease and for what would be best for the team, I could have signed him permanently, but for realism, I bought him in on loan. I don't know whether next season it'll be realistic to sign him permanently from Arsenal, but I certainly would like to try and justify that. Reese Nelson, again, seven goals in the Premier League, third highest scorer in the team, and the man's been on fire since coming in on the one-year loan deal. And as we assume that through to the fourth and final game of today's episode against the league leaders, Man City had a draw for the FA Cup fourth round. Bristol City away at Ashton Gate, so another championship side there. Feel pretty confident of progressing through there and making it into the fifth round of the FA Cup, which I believe is where the board wants to get to, which is, of course, the last 16 and I did say I did say I know we were knocked out early in embarrassing fashion in that penalty shootout in the Carabao Cup against the chair boys but I did say I would like a cup run this year it would have to be the FA Cup if we get through that tie there against the Robins we're into the last 16 now of course the Premier League is still the sole priority in our first season so for the fourth and final game of today's episode here it was Man City uh, here at Turf Moor they got the best away record in the division right now 10 wins and 11 this is why they're currently top of the table as we know of course win the title in uh, real life as well one of the best teams in England one of the best teams in Europe I knew this is going to be a struggle and literally right from the very first minute it was snowy turf I can't stand playing in snow in FIFA the ball bounces off the turf as if it's concrete and literally within 15 minutes we were a goal down could have been two down had not been for Pope Phil Foden win the goal and by the way how good as Phil Foden being this season. This is, I mean, he's had a breakthrough season already, if you want, but this has been a fabulous season for Foden. It's been great to see how good he's been and very excited to see what we'll do at the Euros with England this summer as well. But 2-0 down 25 minutes in. No, Gabby Jesus with another uh, for Man City making it 2-0. And to be honest, 
Sirao was just really struggling in this one. I did manage to get a goal back in the second half. Jay Rodriguez, who to be fair, again mentioned him earlier, has been pretty decent this season. Whilst Woods being the top scorer, he's been our second highest scorer. Made it 2-1, but I'll be totally honest here. It was one of those games where, like, even I got a goal, even I got back into it, I was never really in the game, do you know what I mean? I got absolutely dominated for the most part, but it's it's kind of what I want from these games at this stage of the series. A massive, massive challenge. Very, very difficult. And in the end, a 2-1 loss, really, was a respectable scoreline. Could have been 4, could have been 5. If it wasn't for Nick Pope, it definitely would have been. So, 2 on the final score. So, an inconsistent run of form for Burnley, but it has been like this really since the start of the save. Man City now open up a 10-point gap on Wolves in second place. 11 clear of Manchester United and 12 clear of Liverpool with 15 games to go. We dropped to 12th in the table, 27 points on the board, but we still have a 10-point gap on Southampton in 18th place. So, yeah, as things stand right now, mid-table is looking very likely, and I would have taken that at the start of the season. That will in this episode of the Realistic CM, guys. We thank you for watching. We have enjoyed it, and if you have done, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode as we conclude the January transfer window very soon.